If I were to tell you a story about a man that saved his marriage against all odds, he went through hell and back just to go through a deeper stage of hell again. And all throughout that process of trial and tribulation, he ended his life to be reborn, transformed, and turned into a metamorphic version of himself with his wife back by his side. Now, this is a journey you are also going to take. Whether you like it or not, you are going to go down its path and it's up to you how easy or hard it is and how short or long it is. I'm gonna get straight to the point here so I don't waste your time. You have to change who you are to get a new result in life. Oh yeah, no shit, Josh. Let me elaborate a bit. There are parts of yourself you're not even aware of. These parts have been pushing your wife away little by little. There are these insidious demons and monsters that have poisoned your mind, lied to you, and made you push away the one thing in your life you seek most, love. All right, I'm not trying to get too sappy on you, but it's true. So in the next few minutes, I'm gonna lay out three unique principles designed to kill your ego. You'll discover hidden shadow aspects of yourself, the patterns of fear you both play out, and how to locate that source of that fear to remove it, to develop into your core confident self she misses. These will help you let go of aspects of yourself that have landed you in your metaphorical hell so that you can make your way back into heaven again, metaphorically. Huge warning. This video has the power to alter your consciousness, but only when it's fully listened to. And of course, for the algorithm, there is a fourth concept at the very end of this video on the power of practically letting go to win her back. So let's jump in with the shadow. The most terrifying thing is to accept oneself completely. Oh, man, what a powerful quote. Mr. Young, think of a person you hate or at least don't like. What is it about them? Is it their arrogance? Their greed? Are they shy and insecure and weak? What if I told you that the only reason you don't like them is because the things you don't like in them are the same aspects you don't like in yourself. Let's go over an example. So I have a really good business friend, okay? He's grown his business with me, several businesses, and we would have these masterminds with other entrepreneurs. And every time we got to talking about business, he would always complain about how his employees wanted more money or these, these things are costing too much. He doesn't want to invest in coaching. And he was always complaining about spending money. And he said one day, he's like, Josh, all they want is money. They're so freaking greedy. Everyone looked at me because I know him the best. And being the caring guy, I can't turn my therapist hat off. I said, James, look, the same aspect of your employees wanting raises is the same part of you that loves getting money, that looks at the profit each month, that feels jubilation and exaltation when you get a sell. Everyone else in the Zoom room just kind of like wide-eyed looked around. It was like, oh, it wasn't that much of a mic drop, but think of how liberating it is. All the pain and suffering of others is because of you and your perception. And the main point is that for most men who come work with our team, the first step that produces the most results is getting them to experience and know this concept. So let's look at how it plays out. There are two examples we're gonna look at. Example number one, when was the last time your wife got emotional? For most men, when she gets angry, upset, frustrated, that, that dark emotion, the guys shut inward. They, tell, they try to solve with logic. They try to make her feel better, okay? But in actuality, they're afraid of her emotion because they don't like the emotion in themselves. Or another example is, let's say your wife is being selfish right now. I remember with one of the clients we were working with, he was like, Josh, like she's a different person. She doesn't care what I think. She's like doing all these things without even considering me. And I had to tell that client, yeah, she is being selfish right now because she's trying to take care of herself because she's equating that aspect of herself giving to you over all these years, giving to the kids, giving to everyone else except for herself. And now she's finally taking care of herself. And yes, it is kind of like a pendulum effect that's on the other side, but you also have to recognize that same part of her that's taking care of herself is also the same part of you that wants her back. You want her back for your selfish reasons. Like most men would take their wife back like that without even changing. That's being selfish. So how do you gain authority over this concept? Number one, notice the aspects of her that cause you to emotionally react. For instance, think of the last time you fought with her. What emotions did you feel? What did she do that you didn't like? And then you need to recognize that you deny these aspects of yourself, which is why you react. For myself, I hated selfish people. People that were arrogant and selfish and just people that needed others as well. They took advantage of others. Like, I need you to do this thing for me. It would get so bad where like, if someone asked me to do something for them in a relationship, I was so mad. Like, why can't you do this yourself? I, be self-reliant. You could see how the old emotions are popping up. And this wreaked havoc on my relationships. But looking back at it, the reason why this was is because my older brother, who was pretty abusive to me growing up, he asked me to do things for him all the time. He was, you know, go get my clothes, go do this, go do that, go do this, go do that. And I never stood my ground. And so I hated that aspect in him. And then I repress it in myself. There's this famous quote by Marilyn Monroe. She says, I'm selfish, impatient, and a little insecure. I make mistakes. I am out of control and at times hard to handle. 
But if you can't handle me at my worst, then you sure as hell don't deserve me at my best. Now I made a whole video on my old channel 10 years ago calling this quote completely BS. And I was saying how I was codependent. But now growth, 10 years later, I see this quote through a different lens. Let me ask you a couple questions. What is your wife's biggest fear? Put it down in the comments below what you think. Is it being stuck with someone she loves? Not being loved herself? Is it spiders? What is it really? Your wife's biggest fear is that she is not lovable, that you will abandon her. You see, there's a specific pattern that plays out. When she has her biggest fear of being unlovable, then she feels threatened and unsafe. She thinks she will have that fear of losing you come true. Now, because she is indirect, she will criticize you and test you by pushing you away to see if she's still lovable. This activates your biggest fear of not feeling good enough or appreciated, like all the things you do. So you didn't disengage, you yell, you get defensive, and then more disconnect occurs, and it just perpetuates the self-fulfilling prophecy of her, like, look, oh, I am not lovable, he doesn't love me. So the question is, if this cycle plays out, how do you overcome it? Well, the next concept will answer this question and then some. You need to find the fear. You see, your fear is a compass. It leads you to the darkest parts of your psyche to reveal gifts of growth and transformation. At the source of all your pain, betrayal, and frustration is fear. The fear of being rejected, lost, abandoned, and not loved. I remember one of the darkest moments that completely, look, I was cheated on in my first two relationships, okay? And her people, her people. The, the third person I got with in college, she was my ideal dream, perfect woman, like such a good person, raised Christian. She lost her brother to brain cancer when she was 10, he was nine. And that like brought her closer to God, it humbled her. She was down to earth, smart, like just perfect. Everything I would dreamed of. But I was riddled with insecurity. And her ex-boyfriend broke up with her and left her for another woman. And my first girlfriend did that to me with another guy. And because I wanted my ex back to get that validation, I projected that she wanted the same. We fell in love over the summer and it was like random trips to Tahoe and all these things. And of course, God has a way of giving us lessons that we need to learn. And her ex-boyfriend moved right below her in the same apartment complex in college. What do you think I was thinking every single night when I wasn't over there? Of course, the worst, right? Instead of being open and vulnerable about that fear, bringing it forth and expressing that and working through it with her. Did I do any of that? No, that was weak, right? So instead, I was certain she was gonna cheat on me. So of course, what did I do? I cheated on her first. When I told her, she was shocked. She wasn't even hurt or mad, she was just shocked. A few days go by and I thought, I was like, okay, well, I guess everything's okay, she's gonna forgive me. I was working on my thesis at the time in the middle of the day on Saturday and she bolts into my house, goes straight to the bathroom, closes the door and locks it. So I run over to the bathroom and I'm like knocking on the door and I hear her on the phone with her friend and I'll never forget the word she said to me. She's bawling her eyes out and she says through her sobbing, barely can breathe, why am I not good enough for him? What's wrong with me? Those are the exact words I told my father when I found out that my first girlfriend did to me and left me for another man. I caused the same heart-wrenching pain to her that happened to me. From that moment, I vowed that would never happen again. And I've had many beautiful relationships up until this point and never got cheated on, never cheated on her. And I healed that pain, but it all starts with unveiling the truth of that fear. If I had only been aware of that pattern, I could have saved the relationship and been with her to this day. And so that awareness is the first component. If you need help with that, you can set up a call with our marriage evaluation team down below to get that awareness. You must be fully committed, okay, even though it is free. Now, a common variable for men in our program is having another man in the picture. And I can relate to these guys so much because I know exactly what will happen. There's only three possible outcomes when your wife or girlfriend is seeing another guy or emotionally involved. Number one, you will become controlling. And try to shame her to get back with you. It's wrong. You know, use the kids, use triangulation, use the mother and father-in-law, use the church. Try to make her feel bad about the situation. The thing is, the man doesn't realize all those manipulation tactics are low value and it only confirms to her that you're not the guy she should be with. Number two, the guy talks down about the other guy. So you will talk down about the other guy. Uh, why is she with him? He's nothing, whatever. Okay, don't do that. And number three, the man truly knows he's the best, but he doesn't have to prove it. He accepts where he's at. He focuses on himself. He becomes higher value. He learns to let go of his wife. And through that acceptance principle, she does come back like every other guy, we help save their marriage. Let's talk about letting go. What are you holding on to? What are you trying to emotionally grip as tight as you can in fear that if you let go, you will lose everything? Let go, let go, let go. Now I often write haikus, they aren't the best, but when contemplating letting go, I came up with this one. Heaven does not force. Release into the empty void. Find eternal peace. Like true value and power comes from this. It's an all-knowing, relaxed, silent power. She is already back with you. See that vision of her holding her hand, her head on your chest, her shoulder, 
looking up with you with those eyes and just saying how much she loves you and thanking you for sticking through it. Every single guy, 100%. I know this because I talk to guys all the time who win their wife's back. They saw it in their mind first. They said, oh yeah, it's going to happen. I'm getting her back. I know it doesn't seem that way if she's challenging you a lot, but your sense of reality, your strength and will of just knowing it's going to be okay because you were going to become the man. Like, like you own her soul, not like in a dominating manipulation way, but like you guys are connected at a soul level and it's going to work out. Know that. And if you don't, I can help you. I'll see you in the next one. Oh yeah, check this video out right here. It's one of the best ones on the channel. About a story of a guy saved his marriage.